Hello and welcome to the next Lucosa retro game review video and uh, yeah I did say at the end of the last one that uh, I'll be changing systems yeah I certainly did uh, so this is of course Space Invaders for the Atari 2600 or the Atari VCS as it was still called uh, at the time that uh, this game came out now, if you were not around at the time of uh, this release, you probably have no idea of just how big this uh, this game was. Um, when the Atari uh, 2600 or VCS uh, was released, it, it, it came out in uh, 1977, and uh, it was a bit of a sort of niche product. Uh, home video gaming was still very much in its infancy. There were a couple of consoles around, but they were all ones that had like the, the Binatone. I think there was a Grand Sand one. And uh, the games were all built into the actual device itself. You just, you know, selected which of the built-in games you wanted to play. And they were all basically uh, variants of Pong, you know, <laughs> there, there wasn't a, a hell of a lot of uh, a variety. Um, now the uh, Atari VCS, I say, that changed it all. Uh, you had the cartridges, so you had a much wider variety of games. And its sales were okay, but nothing fantastic. That changed in 1980 when this game came along and uh, Space Invaders just completely changed the uh, fortunes of uh, Atari and of uh, the console and this game alone quadrupled sales of the Atari VCS console just this one game they compare that to a console to today we have uh, you know whatever the next fucking triple-a uh, title is I, I've I am so disinterested in modern gaming that uh, I couldn't tell you what it is probably fucking I don't know Battlefield 33 or whatever the fuck it is anyway um, no triple-a uh, uh, title has had such an effect on uh, the sales of its console as this one did for the Atari. Not even close. And it's not as if the Atari was cheap. Um, it was 200 quid, uh, which in today's money is over 800. So it was not a fucking cheap thing. And yet the presence of this uh, game, the sales quadrupled. So, uh, yeah, it had a big impact. Uh, if you want to know the actual impact of uh, Space Invaders itself in uh, uh, gaming, I did a review of the uh, coin-op uh, ages ago, but uh, I, I, I'm banging on about that in that video. Um, so... For once, I'll, I'll try to avoid actually repeating myself incessantly. Anyway, let's get a game underway. Here we go. Uh, oh, I, 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 I'm trying to be, you know, like objective in my reviews. And I know some people will find that hard to believe when they, you know, they hear me ranting on like fuck knows what when I'm you know covering a really shit game but yeah I do try to be objective but it is fucking hard to be objective about this game because this sound this is the sound of my fucking childhood uh, and every time I hear it it just brings so many fucking memories flooding back Uh, 
we go. So, I mean... As far as, like, the actual uh, technical side of the uh, 2600, um, the cartridges uh, contained, uh, well, they could store 4K, that was it. So the game was stored, or well, this game was written in 4K. Again, if you weren't around at the time and you want an idea of uh, just how small that is, open up uh, Word, type one sentence, save the file and see how big it is. Now on top of that, the uh, actual um, amount of memory that the Atari uh, console itself had was 128 bytes. 128 bytes of memory, that was it. And yet, you look at this game, you listen to how it sounds, you look at how it plays, now go back two videos and look at that fucking ninja hamster that I did. I mean, it, it, it makes a mockery of games that were around even then in 1987. So, you know, seven years after this was released. And now so close. I've, well, I've got to be fucking quick because I think uh, two passes and they are down. Yeah. It's a okay, okay, that's bought me some time. Can I actually take out one of those? Uh, yes. There we go. You know, I don't want these two spread out when they're going quickly. Oh fuck, I didn't want to get... Uh, okay, I think we could be approaching game over here. Yeah, there you go. Once they, are, once they land, that's it, it's game over, no matter how many lives you have. Um, I can't even remember if the arcade, uh, you know, the coin-op original did that. I think the coin-op, uh, if they landed, it would then carry on. Right, another game. So when this game was released, it was advertised as having 112 um, like game variations. And to be fair, yes it does, but um, the variations are a bit slight. And um, they... Uh, well, they basically consist of, you know, you, you can have one version where the, uh, they fire much faster. You have one version where their shots don't come down straight, they sort of wave about and, and you can't really predict where they're going to go. One shot's where your, your uh, base defence uh, platforms, which have now disappeared, um, are moving side to side. Um, one where, uh, did I say, the, the shots come down extremely fast. Uh, one where uh, the invaders themselves are actually invisible and uh, you can only see them, they, they briefly flash when you shoot uh, one of them. The whole uh, fleet uh, flashes up. I'm not going to go through uh, all of the variations uh, in this video because if I do that, it means Oz ends, ends up recording just a blank screen. I'll leave you to figure out how I found that out. Um, uh, there's also variants where uh, the um, you can have uh, two player alternating, or fuck it, okay, here we go. Uh, or you can have uh, two players simultaneous. So even in 1980. You could have two players simultaneous, and yet, for fuck knows how long, uh, especially in the 8-bit uh, and 16-bit eras, you would have games that were tailor-made for, uh, uh, you know, two-player simultaneous mode, 
but they weren't there. Even though they probably could have. And when you consider that this game is, you know, takes up 4K, you... Yeah, I think you could say they should have had it. This could do it. Yeah. Now all of those variations, I say, you, obviously you can also have combinations of some or all of those variants. Fucking hell. This is where it gets really tough. This is where you really could do with, um, you know, the, the simultaneous two player. You need one of them taking, you know, taking care of the left side and one taking care of the right. Okay, so that's bought me some time. Right, now let's start getting rid of some columns. Ah, oh, you fuck. <laughs> um, but yeah, but what those variations don't include is if you set the game difficulty on the console itself. There we go, which I'll do now. So now my firing base is a lot bigger and avoiding shots is extremely difficult especially if I try going um, further to the left when that's as far left as you can go so the aliens can travel much further across each side of the screen than your uh, base can anyway let's put the base back to the regular size so I'm a bit surprised that uh, the marketing people didn't think of uh, you know, this sort of difficulty and end up saying, oh, well, there's actually 224 variations of uh, the game. Maybe they thought wisely that would have been taking the piss somewhat. All right. Another go. And let's get uh, the review underway. Um, graphics. I think the graphics are fucking brilliant. Um, I've, I've seen some reviews of this where people say that uh, they don't like how it looks because the uh, invaders look totally different to the uh, uh, coin op. Yes, they look different, but I actually think it, it works. I, I like the fact that each row is uh, distinctly you know, different from... Uh, You know, from from uh, the, the preceding one and, and the following one, so you, you've got a bit of uh, graphical variety there. Quite, I'm more than okay with that. And I say for for a game that came out in 1980 that is 4K, I think the graphics are fucking great. Audio, again, um, I've heard people say they, they're not keen on the audio because it doesn't sound like the coin op. And, and again, yeah, okay, I can see why they think it, but I don't agree. I love the audio to this, but then, you know, say, it. this is part of the soundtrack of my childhood, so it's a bit difficult for me to be as uh, objective as I'd like as soon as I hear this. Um, you know, I just think, fuck it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I think the sound effects work fantastically well. Okay, now come on, there we go. And of course, the, the people who made this game, sorry, <laughs> I mean they realise, you know, right off the bat, no they're not going to be able to make games, you know, with photorealistic graphics, not in their fucking wildest dreams. And they also knew full well that uh, they were not going to be able to you know, give their games audio that would, you know, rival Jean-Michel Jarre. So they focused on the area that mattered. Gameplay. Or, to put it another way, the polar opposite of how games are developed today. And, um... Yeah, it works. Of course it fucking worked. The game is pure playability. 
absolutely. And it is fucking fantastic as a result. I mean, here we are, it's 2019. And I would much rather play this than almost any other game that has been released over the past, sort of like, five years or so. This game just, it's, you know, playability is all it is about. Yes, it's simple. Now I really am in trouble, because as soon as they make the first sweep, that's it, they're down. I've got one more to get. Fucking hell. So, I think it uh, looks great, I think it sounds great, and the playability is just absolute. <sighs> oh, fuck me. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> right, uh, oh, there you go, it's game over. Um... Because the amazing thing, or one of the amazing things, about the uh, Atari VCS, or 2600 as it became uh, later on, which um, it certainly applies to this uh, fact. When do you think Atari um, stopped supporting uh, this console, the VCS, or 2600? No, you're wrong. Uh, official support ended on January the 1st, 1992. 15 years after the console was released. He put that into, uh, you know, compare that uh, to, you know, uh, the modern consoles. PlayStation 3, well, go back earlier, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4. This console was supported for the same amount of time as those three uh, consoles combined. Now there was none of this fucking horse shit about, right, we're going to bring out a new console, uh, if you bought the old one, tough fucking shit, we're dropping support for it, uh, you won't be able to play any of your old games on this new one, uh, give us 500 quid please. Fuck off. And it's for, for reasons like that, and I say the, the pure playability of the games, and if, well, oh yeah, okay, and because it was the one I grew up with. The, 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 these are all the reasons why I consider the Atari uh, 2600 to be the greatest console to have ever existed. And I have never had the remotest interest in any other games console since. And I still don't. The Atari 2600 was, is, and always will be the greatest console of all time. And this game, for me, is the de facto uh, home video game uh, Space Invaders. Again, was, is, and always will be. I mean, there are fucking countless uh, Space Invaders, uh, you know, either conversions, clones, rip-offs, whatever, uh, available for every 8-bit computer you could fucking name. And I suspect even 16-bit computers. I mean, you, there, there are still, you know, uh, like freeware or public domain versions of Space Invaders made today for PC. This is the, the standard by which all of them uh, were judged and none of them were as good, plain and simple. And this, this game, so I'm not exaggerating it at all, it may sound like I am, I'm not. This game, 
brought... Well, it was the genesis of mainstream home gaming. Prior to, to this release, uh, home video games really were a niche market and most people didn't really consider it as a form of entertainment in the home. And there weren't a huge amount of game developers around because they simply thought the market was too small. So I've still got two lives, but again, yeah, I've got to... Uh, I'm gonna stop fucking firing up those gaps, and that's it. They're now gonna get down. Yeah. So how do I rate it? Um, you surely cannot be surprised. I rate it ten out of ten. Um, this was the first video game I played. Uh, you know, outside of the uh, arcades. And here I am, in 2019, I'm still playing it. So, you know, clearly no other video game has that longevity because it simply hasn't been around long enough to rival this. But it, it is absolute, you know, gaming fucking nirvana. Uh, I think it looks great. I think the sounds are great. And I, you know, it is just playability in its purest form. So there's, there's no way I could give it anything other than 10 out of 10. I mean, surely everyone out there has, you know, or anyone out there watching this has played Space Invaders and probably played this version at some point, even if it was like, you know, a demonstration, uh, you know, Atari set up in somewhere like uh, WH Smith or something. So, you know, I can't believe there are too many people out there who have never played this, well, unless, you know, you weren't born at the time. But then, I'll say, if you weren't born at the time, there's a good chance you're looking at this thinking, what the fucking hell is this cunt going on about? It's just space invaders and it's shit. Yeah, yeah. I am absolutely old school when it comes to gaming, unashamedly. And for me, this is just the best. The game that started it all. Maybe I should actually try and destroy the uh, mother ships that fly across. But I'm more interested in just clearing out the waves. That's it, that is game over. So there you go, Space Invaders for Atari uh, 2600. 10 out of 10, uh, the, the start of my uh, video game obsession. Uh, that brings this review to an end, and we will see you in the next one.